Gaze then thou, son of Pritha, I manifest for thee those hundred thousand thousand shapes that clothe my mystery. I show thee all my semblances, infinite, rich, divine. My changeful hues, my countless forms, see in this face of mine. Adityas, Vasus, Rudras, Aswins, and Maruts. See wonders unnumbered, Indian prince, revealed to none save thee. Behold. This is the universe. Look what is live and dead. I gather all in one, in me. Gaze, as thy lips have said, O God eternal, very God. See me, see what thou prayest. Thou canst not, nor with human eyes, Arjuna, ever mayest. Therefore, I give thee sense divine. Have other eyes, new light, and look. This is my glory, unveiled to mortal sight. This is chapter 11 of the Bhagavad Gita, a part thereof, actually, where Krishna, God, comes down to earth to explain reality to Prince Arjuna, the everyman to whom the Gita is spoken, the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu Bible, the Song of God. And it's a part in which um, we get a description of what it would be like for a mortal human to see, to experience, to taste, to smell, to hear, uh, to acknowledge mentally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, in every conceivable way, and simultaneously to experience God. It uh, practically drives Arjuna out of his brain. He uh, almost has a nervous breakdown. Some people say that he actually does. Uh, it's just too much for us mere mortals to see, uh, to experience. Um, and uh, it's not necessarily a 100% pretty sight. There's all kinds of wonderful things. There are all kinds of horrors. And Arjuna, Prince Arjuna, our everyman, experiences them all at once. Probably the best description of God I've ever seen. And yet the Gita itself implies that even that mind-blowing universal vision that it compares to a thousand suns coming out at once is only the minutest fraction of the immensity of God that words simply cannot explain what Arjuna experiences at that moment in that instant um, I think that might be what I would need to experience. The, that would be the evidence that I would require to believe in God. To me, people throw the term God around with reckless abandon, and usually the ones who are the worst offenders at this are people who claim to believe in God. I don't think it really crosses people's minds as they live out their religious lives, or it doesn't look that way to me exactly the implications of theism are. Infin infinity, infinite being, infinite existence, infinite space, time, etc., beyond all of these things, this mind-boggling, mind-blowing, uh, overwhelming thing, which one says one believes in, called God. What does wearing a clerical collar or saying five Hail, Hail Marys or arguing about the feasibility or the ethicity of the hijab have to do with any of this. It's in the face of the, the entire idea of there being a God, all of this is completely and totally irrelevant and it's irrelevant whether or not anyone actually believes. We're talking about God here. 
And again, I think that the theists or the theists are often the worst offenders in completely understating God. But yes, this is the evidence that I would require to come out and say that I am a theist, that I believe in God, whatever that is supposed to mean. Thank you.